and bhava sambandhi sadhana. I told here also in my walking so can you explain? Eh? Oh, so you should try. Om Jnana Timiram Dhasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha <coughs> So Srila Gurudev has been explaining uh, the five divisions of Bhav uh, called Bhav Mai Not Bhav Har and Bhav Shaman uh, Not Bhav or sadhan. Oh, yes. These are all sadhan, not bhav. Five divisions of raganuga sadhan in the stage of bhav. Yes. Why you use sadhan, uh, raganuga or anything? Bhav mai sadhan. Bhav mai sadhan. So, first of all, there is bhav mai and bhava sambandhi. So, bhav mai refers to the very uh, stai bhav which a devotee has with Krishna uh, in one of the what four... Name? What you told? Stai bhav. Why you are going to a stai bhav? Clearly, in simple words, you should. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, bhava mai means... you should... See. Well, let me try. I will try. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lock my time. Because unless I try and get corrected by you, I'll never understand. Oh. Okay. So, I'm trying. Very good. <laughs> Very subtle topic. So, Srila Gurudev has explained that Bhava Mai is referring to the permanent relationship that the devotee has in his ras with Krishna. In devotees has a ragatmic bhakta has in their heart. What is? Still he, he is doing sadhan. So it is not he is still in his heart. But he wants to gain this. He is, this. he is aspiring for this. Okay. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Better so he here one time more. Okay. <laughs> simple language. Om Gyana Timiranda Sa Gyana Nuna Salaka Chakshur Nulitam Jena Tasmai Si Gurave Namaha So Srila Gurudev ordered me to try to express Clearly and in simple language, the difference between bhav mai sadhan and bhav sambandhi. For those who are in the state of sadhan and they're trying very hard to cultivate devotional service for the attainment of bhav, if they are to be successful, specifically in the, on the path of raga nuga bhakti, then they'll have to very carefully observe five things, beginning with Bhav Mahi Sadhan, Bhav Sambandhi, Bhav Anukul, Bhav Pratikul, and Bhav Abhiruddha. So, the first one is called Bhav Mahi Sadhan. It means that when the devotees' practices of hearing, chanting, and remembering are completely saturated with one mood, such as Dasya Bhav, Sakya Bhav, Vatsalya Bhav, or Madhurya Bhav, then this is called Bhav Mahi Sadhan. Bhav Mai means, oh, there is mm, prachur, profuse. Mm? Oh, his sadhan is composed of this mood. So this is called Bhav Mai sadhan. So what is Bhav Sambandhi? So, 
पाप संबंधी एंड मधुर नो ही हैज हर्ट फ्रॉम एनी डिवोटी रागानुगा ऑफ रागात्मिक एसोसिएट्स ऑफ कृष्ण श्रीधाम सुबल सखा लाइक बासंजारियरिंग ऑफ मादर जोटोदाइन एंड मधुर रस ऑफ दिगो He has heard. No. Then he has agreed, and then he wants. He has aim and object that I will. I want to same mood as one of them. One of them. No. <coughs> he is practicing. He is still not coming, but he has agreed, and then. The shock mood, what he wants, or dash mood, or madur, that mood, which he wants, his own aim and object. Oh, this is called how my. Then he is doing shama, kirtan, favorable to that, not all kinds of. Only favorable to that. Mood. a particular rush if he has a thick greed for madhur rush then favorable to this he are about gopi and krish then it is called bhav mai sad and that kirtan is also bhav mai sad because they are supporting and nursing उत्तर उत्तर नो कीर्तन इज़ नॉट संबंधी दे आर सपोर्टिंग एंड नरिशिंग द मेन दे आर ऑल भाव भाव मय और भाव मय साध and next bhav sambandhi bhav sambandhi refers to if a person they are trying to become absorbed in this bhav mai sadhan hmm? so they will take help of those that kirtan that shravan that smaran which is um, which will transform into bhav mai sadhan for example if a person they want to be following in the moods of gopis of bindavan or then they may sing the kirtans of shila bhakti no takur like yashomati nandana braja paranaga go kula ranjana ka go pi paranadana madana madana manohara kaliya damana vidan but more bhav sambandhi than this oh if they will sing radha krishna prana more jugal kishor because this is very specific how to serve radha krishna under guidance of lalita vishaka and more specific than this more bhav sambandhi sri rupa manjari pada jardan sampada same or bhajana puja but you should know also that from beginning from guru padashray no mantra jap their mantra is some different of mood that guru gets oh krishna and gopi sambandhi hmm? that that is clearly told in sanyasman here yeah. and then oh his most beloved krishna and nij abhilashi what you want in what way you want to serve krishna that move Huh? And pastimes with Krishna and gopis, or in, to anyone you like to follow. Huh? Nam, Rup, Gun, Lila. Huh? This thing, like Sanatan Goswami, what is telling? Sri Krishna Gopal Hare Mukun. गोविंद हे नंद किशोर कृष्ण हार्षी यशोदा तनय प्रसिद 
श्री बल्लभी जीवन राज ओ राजेश वन स्टॉप ऑल आर लाइक विशेषण एडजेक्टिव ओ इज मॉन इज बिकॉज ही इज लॉन्ग मंजरी सो दैट गो to hear to do kirtan and smaran and all kinds of parichaya services are called bhav sambandhi sadhan later on by practicing they will be bhavmay they are upadan karan of bhavmay so you should try to realize very but even hearing i am here and practicing it but very rare now now we are coming to subject we have told about guru oh sanatan go sami has never counted guru in pure bhav then gyan bhav prahlad maharaj is pure bhav but has been some appulence as per jyotya that my krishna is everywhere and in krishna all whole world is there so this relation and this seen everywhere it is called as per jyotya so he thinks that Oh, what kind of sir mean? He has no appetite, hunger, or anything. He has, he never tires. So no use of message like like Hanuma. So it is though it is pure bhakti and uttama bhakti and Pradhan Maharaj is siddha. What perfect, perfect. Hmm? But ye. Something like service is not there in him. He wants to serve. So how? By Sravanan and by Kirtan, especially by Krishna. Oh, after this he cannot do anything. Only these things. But we see that most superior. In some case. दो अमरीश महाराज इज नॉट सिद्ध नॉट परफेक्ट इज साधक बट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ साधक भाव भक्त नॉट विधि भक्ति साधक नॉट कनिष्ठ नॉट मध्यम लाइक ही हैज मूव भाव सो भाव साधक भाव भक्ति साधक एंड ऑल्सो He is not siddha. Pradhan Maharaj is siddha and Mahabhagvat. He has not become Mahabhagvat. Still, oh Bhagvat, and he will be Mahabhagvat very soon. But he, is, in some cases, he is superior than Pradhan. Like Pradhan can never be superior than Shankar and Brahma. But in some case, having seva, or he is called uh, like superior, Brahma cannot be. Uh, Brahma cannot be superior than Brahma. Or oh, in some cases, in some cases, uh, like that, and here. Sanatan Goswami want to say here to show that oh they have done so much services to Lord and they are very near and dear to Krishna, but we don't. We are not in this case only. In the same way, he is Sada Ambrish Maharaj, not Siddha. Pralad Maharaj is Siddha and Mahabhagvat, Bhagvat Uttam. And one of the Maharajan too, Ambarish Maharaj, where he is a sadhak, 
of bhav bhakti. Not perfect. But in some cases he is superior than. In what way? Or no opulence in Ambarish. He shall be in his shadam even by the whole senses. As it has been told in Bhakti Rasam, Anukulena Krishna Anusilam. And in Chaitanya Chaitamiti it has been told, Sar by Indriya Krishna Anusilam. Prahlad Maharaj cannot do by Sarva Indriya. What he can do? By hands? By feet? What he do? But Ambarish Maharaj is practicing. What? Serving. Deity. By all means. What is that? Oh, you should tell Ambarish Maharaj just in brief. Can you? Or some difficulty? Pava jnanam timaram dasya jnanam yana salakaya chaksura militam yena tasmaya sri guravinamo Shri Gurudev has ordered me to speak a few words about the glories of Amarish Maharaj. As it's stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, he engaged all of his senses in the service of the Lord. Savai mana krishna padara vindai. First he engaged his mind in thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord, his hands in cleaning the temple, his nose in smelling the incense and flowers offered to the deity. Yes, sir. Try to follow. How a sadhak Ambarish Maharaj is serving. You can say all senses. Oh, we should try. Like uh, Rup Sanatan, Sad Goswami, it has been told. In the same way. Hmm. His feet in walking to the temple of the Lord, his hands in touching the pure devotees of the Lord. So in this way he was always engaged. Although he had a whole kingdom to rule, he was personally engaged in the service of the deity. And just as one orders his citizens or ministers, he was always very strict in ordering his mind to always think of the lotus feet of Krishna. You're all familiar with the history of how he was willing to go to hell as long as he wouldn't give up his bhakti by following Ekadasi. Maharaj Ambrish heard from pure devotees about the Madhurya Leela pastimes of the Lord. And he himself had his kingdom in Mathura. And in Mathura, there's Vrindavan. So he was engaged in Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Pada Sevaya. He would go to the pastime places of the Lord particularly the Lord's Madhurya Leela pastimes. He was engaging his mind in Astaka Leela Smaranam, the eightfold or 24 hour a day pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna, hearing from pure devotees. So he was serving Seva Sadaka Rupena, Siddha Rupena Chatrahi. He was engaging his uh, internally conceived spiritually perfected form because he's above sadak and that means sadak aspiring for prema bhakti so he was already experiencing his swarup within his material body not so material but he still had his material covering but he was still experiencing his swarup and in his swarup he was serving in the pastimes. In his sadhaka body, he was serving the deity of the Lord. So internally and externally. His, uh, the reason that he's not considered as a premi bhakta or a perfected devotee is because he's not, he doesn't have yet his vastu siddhi. He has swarup siddhi. That is, internally he's engaged in the Leela pastime services of the Lord, but externally he still has this body. So he has Swarup Siddha Bhakti, not Vastu Siddha, and therefore he's in some ways superior to um, Prahlad Maharaj, but not in the sense that he hasn't reached his perfection yet. And he, as you know, he wanted to observe a codice. So he was observing the fast, and at that time, 
Durvasa Rishi came to his palace to, um, on his own invitation for Prashad. But at that time, Ambarish Maharaj could not offer him anything because he himself was fasting and he, he could not, um, he did not even himself take water. He was thinking, How, what should I do now? I have to serve Maharaj Ambarish who's come but I can't, at that time, I can't now break my fast. So what should I do? Thinking and thinking, he, de he decided, even his brahmanas couldn't think of the answer. But because he's a self-realized soul, he understood that if I take water, then I'll be breaking my fast, and at the same time, not breaking my fast. So he decided to take water while his guest was out bathing, that is, Durvasa Rishi was out bathing before he was going to feed his guest. So he had to think, I'll go against the etiquette and take something before my guest takes if I follow the Akadasi rules of taking now pardon. That is, we have to take something to break the Akadasi at the exact right time. One who observes a complete fast not taking even water, can break the fast by water. So he thought, I'll just take water. I have a choice. If I don't follow a codice, then I'll lose my bhakti, because a codice is Krishna himself, and a codice is Bhakti Devi herself. So I'll lose my bhakti, and if I offend Maharaj Ambarish, then surely for offending a brahmana... Or do rasa. I'm sorry, what did I say? Durvasa, then surely I'll go to hell. But if I go to hell with bhakti, that's better than going to heaven without bhakti. So he decided to keep his bhakti. And as you know the history, Durvasa came back because he realized in his trance while he was bathing that Ambarish Maharaj had taken the water. Not water, Charanamritam. Charanamritam, not ordinary water. This was the water that had bathed the Lord's lotus feet. So he came back and he was very angry. So he pulled a hair from his head and he threw that hair and that hair became a fire demoness. And the demoness came to attack Maharaj Ambrish. But Maharaj Ambrish was accustomed to absorbing himself in the leela of the Lord. So with folded palms, and weeping, tears flowing from his eyes, he continued to meditate on the past times of the Lord, knowing, and not worrying about it, knowing that Krishna would protect him. If Krishna wants to save me, he can. If Krishna wants to kill me, he can. So at that time, Krishna had previously made a promise that whoever is fully absorbed in me and dependent on me, I protect him with my very chakra, who we know now by the mercy of Srila Gurudev, is Lord Nishringadev himself. So Krishna threw his chakra, and that chakra first burnt up that fire demon to ashes, <coughs> demoness, to ashes, and then pursued Durvasa Muni. As Gurudev said the other day, when chakra wanted to cut off the head of Shishupal, he did so instantly. But with Durvasa, because Durvasa Muni is actually not a demon, not proud even, he's a premi bhakta, but he performed this pastime willing to take the bad guy position just to glorify the pure devotee Maharaj Ambarish. So that chakra followed Ambarish Mara, uh, Durvasa Muni to Lord Shiva who wouldn't give him protection, to Brahma who wouldn't give him protection, and finally he went to Ramapriya Vaikuntha, the local Vaikuntha planet within this material Lord, a world to pray to the Lord for protection. So in essence, the Lord told him that I can't give you protection. You'll have to go back to my devotee to get protection. Because by offending my devotee, by trying to kill my devotee, I live in the heart of my devotee. So by giving my devotee pain, you're giving me pain. You're asking me to give you shelter, but how can I give you shelter? Maharaj Ambarish is Sharanaga to me. He didn't care that some demoness, fire demoness was coming to kill him. 
He was absorbed and dependent on me, completely fearless. But you're supposed to be a big yogi and rishi, maharshi, powerful, mystic yogi, and you were petrified when my chakra came to you. So you're not at all surrendered to me. Why should I protect you? He said, I am owned by my devotee. I have no independence. I live in my devotee. So Maharaj Amrish, Maharaj Dvasa Rishi told him, in essence, Srila Gurudev explained, although it's not in the Bhagavatam particularly, it's within the commentary of Srila Viswanath Chakrabari Thakur and in the heart of Srila Gurudev, that Dvasa Muni told uh, the Lord, Bhagavan, that why are you just blaming me? Why don't you blame him? I never go to anybody's house, but I went to his house, his palace, because he invited me. So I went because he showed me respect, but when I got there, he took something before me. Why don't you blame him? So Bhagavan told him, you're so foolish, you're such a rascal. He had to observe a Akadasi Puran, and that was my Charanamrit. He was following bhakti. He didn't do anything against etiquette. So you're not really a Brahmin because a Brahmin is, does austerities for benefit of others. When austerities are performed and knowledge is attained to hurt others, then that very Brahmin is not a Brahmin, but he destroys his own self. So you should go back to Maharaj Ambrish. And Maharaj Ambrish was so pure that when he had been praying the whole year and fasting the whole year, blaming himself for what had happened to Durvasamuni. So when the Durvasamuni came back and fell at his feet, and he'd also been praying to Chakra to please don't disturb this yogi, don't kill him. So when he came back and fell at the feet of Maharaj Ambarish, our Srila Prabhupada said that Maharaj Ambarish said, Yes, please immediately take all the results of my pious activities and immediately be delivered. So because of his Vaishnava behavior, Dravasamuni realized what is the glory of the Vaishnava. And he himself followed in his footsteps. He's already a Premi Bhakta. He even associated with the gopis. But to show the glory of Maharaj Ambrish, he showed that he was gradually himself becoming a Vaishnava. So Maharaj Ambrish is this very great Bhav Sadak, teaching us how to worship a Kadasi. And practically speaking, in many ways, even as good as Hanuman, who you'll hear be glorified next, although Hanuman is superior in the sense that he has Vastu City and he's serving with his full body. Thank you. I forget to tell something that uh, it, regarding Gyani Bhakta. That uh, not only Pralatma Rajvat, Gyani Bhakta, Visham Pitama, Sanakshananda in their first career, and so many. You know, Visham Pitama, he fought against. Krishna, right? and he, with his arrow, shooted uh, Arjun and Krishna too. So how he can be bhakta? And again, actually, he was fighting Krishna, and he was taking the side of demon Dukhjodhar against oh. Pure Bhakta Pandavas. So why, why we can think that he was Gyan Bhakta? Like Prahlad Maharaj. Oh, if you read Mahabharata, then you can realize. Really, the tendency, hmm, like Yasuda Maharaj, Krishna, and he is binding him. What? Mortar. Mortar. Krishna is weeping. But yet it is very high class of one. She is <coughs> controlling him, Krishna. Why? For the pleasure of Krishna. Thinking future. 
as a lovely son. What is the duty of a mother to his most beloved son? Or that she is doing so. No particular bhav. <coughs> so it is high class of bhakti. Similarly, here, but not like Jasoda, like Prahlad Maharaj. What Visham Pitama is fighting only by the wish of Krishna. <laughs> it is not fighting by the side of Durjodhana. That Mahabharata Duddha was not there. Because only on the strength of Vishama Patitama, he was fighting Durjodhana. And he has so a strong faith that by the help of Bhishan Pitama, Pandwal will be defeated, defeated and we will own the battle. What can No. We know can cannot do anything against Pap. Arjun, he cannot do. So he was not given first, second, third chance for being commander in chief of the army. After Bhishan Pitama Drona Chat. Then oh, I want to tell you that Bhishan Pitama go fighting against Pandavas, against Krishna. But why pinching? the arrows in the body of Arjun and why? This nonsense. Jiv Goswami tells that a demon was in him. Demon means who? Demon. Demon was and that is why you are. But really this is the thing that <coughs> Bisham Pitama, like Parlat Mahara, he knew and always knew this fact that Krishna is Supreme Law. Any worldly arrow or anything cannot touch. No hunger, no pain, nothing, no agni can touch Krishna. Air cannot touch, fire cannot touch, any arrow cannot touch. So he was doing like this. And that is why he is Jnani Bhakta. Once you should know how the high class of Bhakta. Once fighting was going on. And this fellow, Dujyadhan, oh, he was thinking that what Vishan Pitama is doing? I see that uh, he even fighting from our side, but he wants that Pandav should be won. They should own the battle. Hmm? In heart he has. And he has so much affection for Pandava. Hmm? So he went directly to him. Oh, Pitama, I only trust on you, and for you I am fighting. Hmm? Why you could not tell me first that I should not fight against Pandava? Oh, why you are telling so? I am doing to my best ability for you. Oh, if you want, in one day you can finish all whole army of Pandavas and Pandavas fight every month. Anyhow, I want a word that you will <coughs> help me in winning that battle. He told us, I cannot tell this, but come with your wife in the midnight when I am in trance at that time. So, <coughs> Durjadhan went to his wife. And told that in the night you should be ready. I will bring chariot, and you should be in my chariot, and we will go to Vishampitama. 
he will be in trance and very powerful. Hmm? So, when the action he may go again, that you should be Sobhagyavati. Sobhagyavati, your husband will not die. Anyone cannot hit him. So, by this one, oh, we can own Pandavas. Then, <coughs> she was ready, but in the evening, from evening, when battle was stopped, stopped in the evening night, then heavy rain came with so much wind. So <coughs> Krishna did it. So rain, more and more coming, more and more. And also what? Thunderbolts. And so much mean. So he was waiting, but increasing, increasing. Then he told that today it has been late. Oh, and not possible to go to Vishnu Pita, which we will go tomorrow. And in the meantime, Krishna called Draupadi. Oh my Shaki, be ready. We will go to Vishnu Pitama just now. Hmm? Don't care for raining so heavy rain. Come in my chariot. And drop the cap. And he told something. Oh, you will have to do something. Hmm? And then they went. And then Krishna stopped his chariot on the door on the tent dead, door of tent. And at that time, oh, he took umbrella and in that shade he told that you should go there. And she went. He take two bell for, up to here that Visham Pitama should not see him. And when he went, she went, oh, she met something, tree, that his trunks go away. And then when trunks went, oh, then Vishampita told, Oh, Bhanumati, wife of Durjodhan, you have come very good. You bhava, um, Sabhagyavati bhava, Akhanda Sabhagyavati. What means? Anyone cannot kill your husband and you will be happy always with your husband. It means, Oh, Pandwal will be defeated and thus he will be king. Eh? Whole uh, kingdom will be of Duryodhana. In the meantime, Draupadi took his bell up and began to smile. And when she was, he saw, Ari, this is not a Panmati, Draupadi. Draupadi, you, from where you came? And who brought you in this rainy season? Then, oh, I think mm, you have come with that black tricky person. <laughs> Where he is? Oh, standing. <laughs> Waiting for me. And then he himself went and did pronoun to Krishna. Kesha, you are very tricky person. <laughs> I wanted to give whom? Really, I don't want. And I never wanted that. So Jodhan should be like this. Oh, I want that Pandav should want the best. But anyhow, Jodhan requested and I was doing, but you are tricky, you saved me and Pandavas too. <laughs> and uh, Krishna took Draupadi and the Bhishan Pitamahalai. And that is he, we call him Dhyani Always is in favor of Bhakta, Pandavas and others. Sanat Sanandam Sanat Kumar, in their first career, they were Gyan Bhakta. But only by the mercy of their father, Brahma, they smelt something from Vaikuntha, a deer wrapped with sandal coat and was given in the lotus feet of Narayan. And from there a smell came. 
and by the power of Brahma, it went in the nose of Samakumar. At once they followed, and from where it is coming, and they followed and went there. They have power to go there. So they went there and saw beautiful Narayan. Now, up till now, oh, they were worshipping whom? Nirvishes. No form of Krishna. But they saw, oh, very beautiful form. They were charmed and they gave up that idea and they began to. So they are also. So we should try to know all these things and follow now Ambarish. But what Ambarish? He told that. Oh, I have no quality. I serve my duties, not directly to Krishna. Though I want that I am wish to serve, but I cannot. If you want to see direct service to Krishna, that is his Ram, oh, you can go where? Oh, you can go to Tim Purush or Ram. And hearing this, he became very happy and he went. So, this is uh, first Gyani Bhakta, then Suddha Bhakta, but it is practicing Bhakti Yoksadha. And then Siddhanma, he went there. And he, what he saw? How many bichet wonderful things? We will discuss it later on, tomorrow on, when we will go in San Francisco. Today's drama play. They should be ready. Drama wala, they should be ready. And uh, you, Jama wala. you should sing a good time. And you should be ready if time will be. Quickly, quickly. Oh, it's bad to go. I <laughs> need to go. You can hypnotize me with a glance You're the thief to steal away my heart I wish I could trust you but your crooked smile Dances on a serpent for your lover's eyes Be merciful to me Cause I'm so long waiting be merciful to me, I am all alone. You were there before I knew your name. You could hear me calling out in pain. All my dreams are broken, all that's left for me is to find the shelter of your servant's feet. Be merciful to me, cause I'm so long waiting. Be merciful to me, I'm all alone. Be merciful to me, cause I'm so long waiting. Be merciful to me, I'm just a fool.
Seattle. My family, Prabhu, could you stand up and let everybody know? He's the regional distributor for North, the Northwest area in Seattle, and anybody who needs books in that area can see him. In Berkeley and Oakland, Covey Doc Prabhu, please stand up. I think you're starting. And here in Badger, none to go, Pal Prabhu. In San Diego, Gianta Prabhu. Where are you? Right here. Gianta, over there. Anybody who needs books in San Diego. And Los Angeles, Jack Mohan Prabhu. And Govinda Dasi. We are standing there. Upananda. Uh, Upananda Prabhu will be staying in the Los Angeles Temple to help. And, and San Diego to help them with book distribution. Also, a new distributor in Canada and Vancouver. Prasasya Prabhu, where are you? So, tomorrow there'll be a class. Atul Krishna Prabhu will be giving class at 10 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, there'll be another meeting on the practical application of book distribution. I'd like to invite everybody to come. Ashram Maharaj, Bhaktisar Maharaj, other sannyasis will be there talking about their experiences. We have three programs that I just want to announce quickly that, that need help uh, for donation of books. If any devotees feel inspired to donate some money to these programs for buying books and distributing, we'd appreciate it. The first is a prison program. There are over 800 prisoners all over the United States. And there's one devotee, Dr. Chris Matthews in Knoxville, Tennessee, that has an, a group of devotees writing letters to them and sending them books. So he's asking for donations for books, for today's books, Prabhupada's books to go to all the prisons. If you're interested in donating to this, please see me or this Jinta Prabhu. Secondly, we have some ladies traveling preaching programs that need some books. If you yourself cannot distribute books and you would like to give some donation for this, it's greatly appreciated. And thirdly, in Africa, Ashram Maharaj, Bhaktivedanta Ashram Maharaj, would like to say a few words about his program and those that uh, would be interested in helping him. So I'll be very quick, because I know time is of the essence. Um, basically, in February, um, we're hoping that Shila Gurudev will be coming to Nigeria for his um, first trip to Africa. Shila Gurudev has toured the whole world, but one part that his two lovers feet have embraced is Africa. So devotees in Nigeria, they're very enthusiastically starting to prepare for Gurudev's coming to Africa in February. So in um, preparation for that, we're starting a town, every town and village program in Nigeria. Sajan Maharaj, he was already there, and he can attest to the enthusiasm of the people in Nigeria and Africa in general. For instance, just three months ago, we're in Nigeria, and we went to one town, Ibadan, and we went to a Muslim community of about 800 people. And they were so enthusiastic. It was about the best reception in Cape Town that I've ever been in. The whole place was completely rocking. And they, they, got their, they had their own beads, Muslim Japa beads. And they took out their beads and closed their eyes and went with me to the bank of the Ganges and chanted Hare Krishna. And then after, we got into an enthusiastic Cape Town. After that, then we went to um, some villages. And we got there two days before. And then we, um, we sent the village town crier. He would just go out, beat his drum, and invite people to the program. And every evening we had 500 to 1,000 people coming for five evenings. So it's a very, very fertile field. In fact, um, two years ago, here in Badger, I was explaining how good Brazil was, and I was being boohooed. And then when Gurudev went last time, 120 people went and took initiation. So this time when Gurudev comes to Nigeria, we want to double it. Double it. So we're asking any help that you can give here specifically towards books, or you can come help and come 
Before Good Life comes, we're going to have a festival going around the country, and which will culminate in Good Life's coming. Also, we'll have TV shows, which will be starting from July, leading up to February when Good Life comes. Okay. This is good, Professor. I like it. But only I fear that I should not be black or complexion. <laughs> Oh, no. By Grenade coming to Africa, then all the golden forms of the Africans will start to manifest more and more. Arriba! Very quickly, I would just like to uh, introduce uh, Garutama Prabhu, who has today accepted the Avana Presta order from Srila Gurudev. Yeah. Senior uh, Srila Prabhupada disciple and also one of the top book distributors in ISKCON ever in Los Angeles Temple. So we're very, very happy to have him uh, join our Sangha and help us. Yay! But I want, I believe, that he should be steady and he should be always with me or you or any pure devotee. And he should distribute. He should not be built at any time. And he should follow principles. My blessings to you. Jai! I wanted to report something that got passed by, but the kitchen staff wanted to let Srila Gurudev know that on Anakut Mahamahotava, 675 preparations were made. So tonight, we're going to continue Sri Nard's journey as he's searching for the greatest recipient of Sri Krishna's mercy. But I just wanted to say, I feel that for sure we have the greatest recipient of Sri Krishna's mercy right here amongst us. Thank you so much for coming. I think Yagun Prabhu had some announcement to make just before we begin the drama. Is there any microphones anywhere? Anybody around here? <coughs>